Lily. Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, it's very exciting. I've never done this before, as I'm sure you can now tell, um, with all the technical hitches, but it's all good learning. So, my name's Hannah Munro. Um, I'm an occupational therapist in South Cumbria. I um, specialise in sensory processing difficulties and as a mum of an autistic child I do have a special interest in autism. Um, I conduct um, assessment and intervention um, in the Cumbria area, um, working both in the home with families and in schools. Later this year I'm very excited that I'm going to be having my own um, sensory integration clinic space. Um, I'm passionate about parent carer support and education um, and that's why I'm doing this today. I'd appreciate it if you could like and follow my Facebook page if you haven't already and what that means is you'll have access to ongoing advice and support um, and you'll also get details of future training. Um, I have posted on my Facebook page just this morning um, a link to my website with a sensory ideas document. So these are bullet points of everything I'm going to be doing today and it means you don't need to take notes. Um, so you don't need it to, you know, in front of you as I'm, as I'm talking, um, but it, you can if you want and then that's for afterwards um, as a reminder of all the activities. And there's also links in that document to suggested equipment, some web links um, and some resources. So obviously this session is being recorded because it's being recorded on Facebook Live and it will be posted, but it's only me that's being recorded, none of you will be recorded. Um, because of the, the, great, the huge turnout, which is great, thank you, um, it's amazing really, um, I'm not going to be able to answer many questions. Um, but I am happy to answer questions afterwards. You can message me with questions um, and um, we can have um, a chat going on Facebook and I'm happy to answer questions afterwards. Um, as I've said, I think that um, if children are with you, that's absolutely no problem. Um, but this session is aimed at me showing parents what you can do with your children later on. Um, it's not a follow along type session. It's hard to do a session that suits everyone. Um, you'll all be listening with children of different ages, different strengths and needs. So you're going to need to decide which activities will work for your child. I would say though that, as you know, our children can surprise us and sometimes it is worth just um, giving an activity a go and sometimes giving an activity a go quite a few times before you decide that it's not for you. These kind of activities only work if the children want to join in. It's not the kind of activity that you can you know, really make a child do. I often find the best way is to start doing an activity myself um, or um, you know, engage with a sibling and then hopefully the child will, will decide that, that it looks fun and come and join in. As to why I'm speaking on this topic, why sensory activities, well, research shows us that the need to integrate or combine all the information we get from our senses in order to make sense of the world and successfully interact in the world. And all the sensory systems need to work together for effective sensory processing. There's seven sensory system, there's seven senses that make up the sensory system. Um, and it's these sensory systems that process information as the building blocks to many other skills. Now, at the end of the document that I've um, posted on my website, there is a really nice pyramid of learning. It's by Williams and Schellenberger, um, and it's a really nice visual to look at. And what that shows is um, how academic learning, how daily living activities like brushing your teeth and getting dressed, even how your child communicates and behaves all grow and develop from a strong sensory foundation. Um, I explain sensory integration, sensory responsivity, individual senses in my sensory workshops. So this session today is just looking at practical ideas. But ideally, if you can attend a sensory workshop 
um, and it doesn't need to be mine. Mine are uh, for people in the local area, but OTs all around the country run similar introduction to sensory processing workshops then you'll have a better understanding of sensory processing and it will be easier for you to identify which activities are most appropriate for your child at a particular time. So with that in mind, um, I've characterised the, categorised the activities today into alerting, organising and calming. So what you need to do is you need to consider your child's arousal level at the time. Um, and select a calming or an alerting activity depending on what you think they need. So arousal is the fluctuating level of alertness of the nervous system and it's extremely affected by sensory input. What complicates this though, because nothing's ever simple, um, is that activities have different effects on different children. So um, a good example is bubbles. Some, activity, uh, some children find bubbles an alerting activity, whereas bubbles for other children are calming. Uh, but you know your child best, and trial and error is completely fine. Um, so I've categorised these activities, but you may need to change these activities around depending on your child. So let's get started. And you might have seen, if you were here at the beginning when we were having technical problems, my lovely son, Aidan. So um, my son, Luke, is um, he goes to a special school and he's at school today, but my son, Aidan, is at home with me. So I'm gonna ask Aidan to come out. Well done for being very brave. So this is Aidan. Um, and Aidan is gonna help me start with alerting activities. Um, can I ask if you can, if anyone on Facebook Live can give me a thumbs up so I know you're all following and that everything's good so far. All right then. So alerting activities are acti uh, great for children who have a lower arousal level and they're good for most children after sitting and concentration activities. So particularly in schools, you might hear the word movement break or sensory break. So these are your typical sensory break activities. If you've got children at home um, sitting doing home learning, after they've had a period of time doing this, they need some of these activities. The important thing to remember is after these alerting activities, you need to do some organizing um, and calming activities. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, work through the list that I've put on my website um, and some stuff I will talk through and other things we're going to demonstrate. So I'm not going to demonstrate bounces on the trumpet, the trampoline, the bed, if you let your children do that. Um, I'm also not demonstrating skipping, running, jumping and star jumps, but they're nice, simple um, ones to get started. I did say that I would try and use um, cheap things that you find around the house but I do want to show you a few pieces of equipment that um, we spent a bit more money on that some of you might be interested in. So Aidan is gonna demonstrate the Gorilla Gym over here. So I'm gonna put the light on for a moment. Um, and what you can see is this is the Gorilla Gym. If you have enough space in your doorway, this is absolutely fantastic. Um, as you can see, Aidan's doing pull-ups and you can also use it as a normal swing. Yes, okay. So um, I, I checked all the safety of this before we came online. So the main thing with the Gorilla Gym is that before you use it, there's a lot of pieces you need to check are, are safe and in place. Um, but, but having a swing um, offers linear vestibular input it's very regulating um, my son that's at school he will use this swing in the morning before he goes to school and as soon as he gets back from school um, and it just helps keep him regulated so that's the gorilla gym and there's a link um, on the page okay so it's another alerting activity if we can ask Aidan to do some fast bouncing on the therapy ball so you're going to sit on the therapy ball Aidan and you're going to do some fast bouncing um, and this would be ideal in time to music. Um, so alerting music would be music with a fast beat. So we'd have fast beat and we'd do some fast bouncing. Okay, now what we're going to do 
I'm going to ask Ian to stop bouncing and sit back on the ball. I'm going to come behind Aidan to support him and you, you would only do this if you know your child would like it because some children would find this terrifying. We're going to move Aidan in different directions. Ooh. Ooh. Is that okay? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so that's quite a good one. Um, only if your child likes it. Okay, so next we're going to get our bubbles. Now, I know bubbles is nothing new, but I've got a few ideas to make bubbles into a bit more of an activity. So, I'm going to give Aidan this bat. So, we've got a ping pong bat, but if you haven't got a ping pong bat, if you get a magazine and you roll it up or a newspaper, you can also use your magazine or newspaper just as well. So, I'm going to ask Aidan to hit the bubbles without hitting me. <laughs> That's it. Well done. That's the bat. So now what I'm going to do, thank you. Now what I'm going to do is ask Aidan to with two feet to stamp on the bubbles when they hit the floor. Crush the bubbles Aidan. Yes. Okay. So that's that's the bubbles activities. Um, it's really good. Um, it's a really good oral motor activity if you can encourage your child to try blowing the bubbles as well. Um, we've not tried it today because I think we might have a puddle on the floor that I'll slip on. Um, but if your child can blow the bubbles, that's great. Right, masking tape. Um, masking tape's the easiest. Um, but you can also get kind of coloured electrical tape and, and that's nice as well. So with masking tape, we are going to just do a nice line and I'm going to ask Aidan to balance along the line. That was too easy, wasn't it? Okay, so now I'm going to ask Aidan to balance on the line with this on his head. Okay. Whoa, that's it. Now, Aidan, can you try that again? Can you put your hands out to the side? Yeah, and now can you balance like that? Look at this, impressive. Okay, now we're going to have um, a zigzag. Okay, so we're going to have a zigzag. And the zigzag is toxic slime. Okay. Are you going to stand on the toxic slime? No, not a great idea. So you're going to jump, avoiding the toxic slime. <gasps> I'm back again. Well done. So one of the things um, you can do to any of these activities, uh, and it only works for some children, some children would feel anxious about this, but for it is to use a stopwatch. So I'm not going to do that now, but a lot of these activities, some children enjoy beating their time, uh, beating the clock. So that's just something to think about. Okay, now more masking tape. Okay, so we're going to make a box for Aidan to jump into. Okay, so obviously you can change the size of your box um, to make it easy and harder. Aidan has just gone for the hardest option straight away. Aidan, can you come down and show the easy option to start with? So Aidan, if you come over here, just here, and can you jump from there into the box? Ready? Yes! Nailed it. Okay, so what you can do is you can encourage your child to stand further and further back to get into the box. Or, or you can encourage your child, if you're happy with them climbing over your furniture, 
to jump off the sofa onto the box. And that's actually, from a sensory perspective, that's actually really good. Um, you can encourage your child to jump further, to jump higher. Okay, right. Thank you. Let me see where we're up to. Um, stepping stones. So stepping stones are great. You might have seen on my website, on my Facebook, we have these stepping stones. Um, I've put the link. Um, okay, thank you, Aidan. So these are the stepping stones. These are great, um, but they are a little bit expensive. What you can just do is get some cardboard boxes um, and colour them in or paint them. Um, or you could just get coloured card and you could cut out different shapes and you could dot them around your room for a floor is lava type game. So these are great because they're different heights and different sizes, but you can just make them with cardboard. Okay, right then. Okay, so that's stepping stones. Um, and then what I've said here is what you can do is you can create an obstacle course using all of these ideas. So if you think about it, um, you could say you've got to go from the sofa to jump in the box, you've got to go across the stepping stones, then you've got to um, stamp on the bubbles before they hit the ground, um, then you've got to balance on the line with the bean bags on your hand, and then you've got to jump across the toxic slime zigzag. So you can have an obstacle course around your room. If your room's not big enough, you can be going from the kitchen to the lounge to the hall. Um, and if you Google sensory paths, but I've put that in the document, you can get some really nice um, ideas. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna show you is um, animal actions. So Aidan's gonna grab the dice for me, please. Yeah, can I have a, have a look first? So these dice, and I've put the link um, again to buy these dice, are really nice. They've got pockets in them, so you can put whatever you like in the pockets. Um, if you don't want to get the dice, you can print yourself some cards, and what you can do is you can um, offer the cards face down to a child and just get them to pick a random card. So you don't need the dice. Um, but the dice are quite nice. So then, I'm going to get Aidan to roll the dice. That's it. Hop like a frog. Can you hop like a frog? Amazing. Okay. Wow. Okay. So we've got um, things like stomp like an elephant, wriggle like a worm, soar like an eagle, gallop like a horse. So um, if you print some um, animal actions cards, if you Google them, um, that can work really nicely. Okay. So let's get the next page. Ball games. I'm going to grab a washing basket. I'm going to grab a washing basket. Aidan, do you want the big ball or the little ball? Oh, going tricky straight away. So you can choose different balls. You can add interest, have a light up tactile ball here. Um, obviously, the bigger the ball, the easier it is. Um, and we're just going to start nice and easy and we're going to get them in the basket. So we do that for a bit, but that is too easy. So now, oh, that's a good idea. Over your head. Ready? I'm cheating. I got my name, but I cheated. Oh, and you hit the light. Nice one. Okay. So um, I've put different ideas there, you know, with one hand over the shoulder, that kind of thing. Um, but that's a nice, simple thing you can do with a washing basket. Okay. Um, the next thing that I've put here is um, sensory movement walks. So what you can do is you can agree some fun movement rules before you go for a walk. So what we could do, so we could do this later, we could say that every time we see a blue car, we're going to hop five times. And then we might say when we get to the end of the road, we bend down and then we jump to the 
jump to the sky. And if we see a post box, what would we do if we saw a post box? Mm, we could do a star jump, couldn't we? So we can, you can set yourself some movement rules and then you can go on a walk and it just makes it a bit more interesting, but it adds a lot more sensory input while you're having your walk. So, um, cold water play. So, cold water is alerting, whereas warm water, which is mentioned later, is calming. So, um, it might be that you just have a washing up bowl and you just put a little bit of warm water in it and you put your child's favourite toys in it. It might be some Lego, it might be some foam letters. But um, the, the point of having it on here was just to link with you that cold water is a nice alerting activity. Another alerting activity um, is drinking a frozen drink or chewing on an ice lolly. So if you remember, this um, alerting activity section is the ideal sensory and movement break. So if your child's been concentrating, um, having a frozen drink, a cold drink, or an ice lolly, um, giving them a snack that is crunchy or chewy in particular is what they need. So when they've been concentrating, something cold, something crunchy, something chewy, that can really help in addition to all of these activities. The last, um, alerting activity we're going to show you is with a scooter board. Um, I've put the link to some scooter boards on there. Um, so this one is you, Aidan's going to push off the wall and hopefully not fly into the camera and knock it over. Okay, so you're going to get, so you're going to go the other way on your side so you can hold on to the handles. That's it. And you're going to push off, okay? Wow. Oh, and a spin, a push and a spin. Right. Okay. So, you could do that a number of times. We're not going to do it now. Um, but yeah, you could, you could get your child to do that, say, ten times pushing off. And um, you can also pretend that you're surfing. So, do you want to go on your tummy, Aidan? Um, and pretend you're surfing. And what you... So Aiden's going to surf around, you're going to come back Aiden, and I'm going to get you to catch some fish, so can you reach out and catch the fish? Oh, and there's another one. Quick, it's swimming away! Okay. So, scooter boards are great, it obviously, it obviously depends, thank you. It depends what kind of floor you've got, we're very lucky here to have this type of floor. So that's the alerting activities. Um, organizing activities so organizing activities they tend to be heavy work activities and if you're already um have done some sensory training you'll uh, understand what i mean when i say these are tend to be the proprioceptive activities so they involve pushing pulling lifting and resistance um they have they can also have a calming effect. So the word organising means that they rarely overload the nervous system and that you tend to get a modulating effect, which can be calming or alerting, but most of these activities are a bit more on the calming side. I've written on this document, I've said 20 second proprioceptive activities. That's not to say that you need to do them for 20 seconds. I think that was to show you that, that they can just be a quick activity, that um, these are, you know, mini activities. So, chair push-ups. Can you do a chair push-up, Aidan? Yeah. So just, you can do a few, some chair push-ups. That is getting all Aidan's muscles working, um, it's getting the resistance, and that is having um, a modulating effect that is helping his nervous system. A really good one is a wall push. So, Aidan, can you push this wall down as hard as you can? Push the wall, that's it. So to just get your child to push as hard as they can against the wall, that is a really good one. Um, and for older children, when we're looking at them 
developing some self-regulation. Some of these little activities are great. You can, if your child knows that they're just feeling that they're, they're um, becoming a bit more into a high gear, they need to, to feel more in a just right state, just something as simple as a few chair push-ups and going to push the wall can actually start to bring them down. Hand pushes and hand pulls. So that's your row, row the boat kind of thing um, where I'm going to ask Aidan to try and pull me over. Yeah, and then I'm going to try and pull Aidan over. Yeah, and then we can also push our hands and try and push each other. Yeah, so that kind of thing, again, it's, it's not rocket science, but it's surprising how good these activities are for the sense. Oh, that's it. Okay. So we have shoulder shrugs. We have shoulder spirals. Hand stars. Because in terms of um, proprioception, we need to think about the whole body. So a lot of these activities, um, it, they're in our legs and in our arms, but we, we need to get that proprioceptive input ear, around our mouth, in our hands. Um, and as I've said, if you come to um, a sensory processing workshop, you'll understand more about terms like proprioception. Um, thumb to finger challenge. Can you do the thumb to finger challenge? Can you press? That's it. Yes. Thumb to finger challenge. Resistance band, this is quite cheap um, and that's quite good and you can get different strengths of resistance band. As you can see, Aiden is very strong. Are you going <laughs> to ping that in my face? Okay, so, um, oh, a crab walk and crab football. I'm, I, I'm pausing because I'm wondering whether I just let Aidan do it or whether I join in. And I think I better join in, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's not easy. Right, crab, crab football, Aidan. Okay. You're, you, oh, you're going over here. Right. Ready for some crab football? Oh, this is hard work. Okay. You're cheating. You're putting your bottom down. Keep your bottom up. Whoa. There we go. So that's crab football, and that's a good one. Bear football is slightly easier, but not much. <laughs> so we're going on all fours like a bear. Oh, <laughs> and then we're trying to. That's it. You're gonna have a sit down, Aiden. Right. So that's bear football. Um, where are we up to? We're not going to demonstrate all of these, but there's a frog hop and a snake slither. Oh, wheelbarrow walk. So a wheelbarrow walk is, um, as Aidan's going to show, is that it's really hard um, to do, but if some children find it easy, do you want to go on all fours? Um, if you go on your knees, that's it, I'm going to pick your feet up, put your hands out. Yep. So wheelbarrow walk's really quite tricky, but if you have a child, thank you, that finds that is finding that easy you can bring it on a level so getting something like a cushion um, and getting them to wheelbarrow walk over a cushion or just dive onto it um, is is adding additional sensory input so um, but we're not going to practice wheelbarrow walking over a cushion okay um, log rolls you're going to demonstrate a log roll, Aidan. You're going to lie down and roll over. Perfect. That's a log roll. Okay. So if you jump into a pile of bean bags, of pillows, of duvets, it's providing the body with a whole lot of tactile input. Um, which can be really beneficial, really calming. Um, so you don't need special cushions like we've got here. Um, you can just use duvets and pillows. Go for it, Aidan. Wow. Okay, so that is providing the body with a lot of tactile input. 
what we could do, you're going to have a sit down. Um, what we could do, if we had more, if I wanted to raid all of the bedrooms and get all of the duvets, um, we could get Aidan to climb the mountain. Um, so rather than just getting the tactile input of diving into the bean bags, if he was climbing the mountain, he'd also be getting proprioceptive input as well. And another idea would be to get Aidan to burrow through um, the mountain. Um, and, and that would have the additional sensory input too. Um, crawling through tunnels, um, that's a great one. Um, a stitch different, um, who, a stitch different um, who um, are co-hosting this event. I work closely with a stitch different. Um, and the reason for that, while I'm talking, Aidan's gonna show you how to crawl through a tunnel. The reason I work closely with the Stitch Different is because they follow the Royal College of OT guidelines on weighted therapy. Um, and as an occupational therapist, it can be a bit concerning sometimes um, that you can just go on and order a weighted blanket and just choose any weight. Um, so I know that, that a Stitch Different will follow those guidelines and they'll seek OT advice if necessary. So a Stitch Different are going to be producing a, a tunnel like this um, and the tunnel's great because you're getting the tactile input from the lycra um, and as you're crawling through it you're getting the proprioceptive input as well. That's the tunnel. Um, a great activity but it doesn't work with our size therapy ball. So this is quite a small therapy ball but if you have a larger therapy ball a perfect activity is trying to push the therapy ball all the way through the tunnel. This is a bit too easy with this tunnel um, because I've got such a small therapy ball. Yeah, so it just falls through. But if you have a bigger therapy ball, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, commando crawling. You can do this as a race. Should we race? You're cheating, I'm not ready. Right, okay, we're gonna commando crawl across the room. Oh, yeah. So, commando crawling, um, where you use it on your knees and your elbows. I can't wait till we get to the calming activities. I think they're needed. Okay, so. Um, and then I've suggested, do you want to come and sit on the sofa? No, okay, he doesn't want to come and sit on the sofa. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, you can try an obstacle course combining all of these activities. So a bit like with the alerting section, um, you can design an obstacle course, putting them all together. Right, a scooter board, we've already shown you the scooter board, but in this organising category, what we want to do is we want to use the scooter board in a way that provides some heavy work for the muscles, some proprioceptive input. So this time, what, what we would do is we would get Aidan to either pull a sibling around or a heavy toy. Um, so you could use, could use a rope or some, whatever you've got to hand really. So this is what I've got to hand. So we would, if Aidan's brother was at home, they would take it in turns, sitting on the scooter board and pulling in each other round. Um, I could try, but I think it could go badly wrong. No, that's good. Okay. And that is some great heavy muscle work. <laughs> okay. So if you have got the right floor, um, investing in a scooter board can be a good idea. Be careful that you check the sizes before you order because they do come in different sizes. Okay, um, some oral motor activities. So I did a post recently on my Facebook um, about oral motor activities that if you haven't seen you might want to have a look at. 
So oral motor activities tend to be really organising um, and they can help facilitate a better retention span. And um, they also strengthen the muscles in and around the mouth so they can really help uh, children improve feeding skills as well. So I'm only going to show you one activity because there are quite a few on my Facebook. Um, and also, um, I've provided a link at, near the end of, um, of the document to um, a website called the OT Toolbox. And that's probably my favorite OT website for ideas. Um, so do have a look at the OT Toolbox. So what I've done here, we've just cut a cardboard box and we've drawn a football pitch on it. We've just got some straws. We happen to have a little football from, a, from another game, but you could use a piece of cr scrunched up paper. And we're gonna race each other to get a goal. I'm not ready. Starting again. Okay, so you can try different balls. Um, if your child is struggling um, and they, this is an area that they need to develop in, try, this is just a piece of tissue paper, um, or, you know, toilet tissue or um, kitchen roll. And then this is really light, so that'll, be, that'll fly across. So that's, you know, you can adapt and grade the activity, start with something really small and light and build up to something heavier. Um, and you don't need to play it for long, you know, you don't want your child to pass out, but um, uh, it, it is, does have a really organizing effect. Okay, so, um, and then the end of this section, I've mentioned that drinking from a sports bottle, drinking through a thin straw, curly straws are great, and drinking thick drinks through a regular straw, they're all really good oral motor activities that have an organizing effect. So, finally onto the last section, calming activities. So what makes most of these activities calming is the deep tactile sensory input. Um, and some of them do, do have proprioceptive input as well. Um, so, you ready for calm? Are you ready for calm? Um, if we had music on now, we would be picking music with a slower beat. Um, we might put some, scent, some um, lavender um, or you can go to the health food shop and ask for advice. So we've got this little diffuser, which was very cheap. You can put some watered down oil um, and you can just have that going in the room. And we're going to start with a Lycra wrap. Okay. So we're going to do the Lycra wrap standing up. Now, I do have a very nice piece of Lycra here. Um, but I'm going to use a blanket because I think most people would just have a blanket at home. You need a blanket ideally with some stretch. This is one of those Dunelm teddy blankets, which are great because they have good stretch. So Aidan, if you come and stand here. Right, okay. So the first time you try this, you would definitely do it with your child's arms out. They might like it with their arms in, um, and it's up to the child. So I'm gonna ask Aidan to hold that piece for me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it really tight without pulling Aidan over. Now, I know Aidan doesn't like this very tight, um, so I'm not gonna pull it too tight. Um, if your child likes the deep pressure, they like to be squeezed, then this is great, you can pull it tighter. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this end out. Yeah, can you hold that end, Aidan, so it doesn't go missing? So I'm going to keep wrapping him, and I would be, if it was your brother, I would be doing it a lot tighter because that's what he would like. And then when we finished, um, if you have two people, it's great if you one can pull that way and the other can pull that way, or I can just pull on them that way. And it's giving Aidan a whole lot of tactile input, a big squeeze. Okay, so that is the lycra wrap. You can also do that lying down. The important thing with all of these deep pressure activities is that you're completely avoiding the head and the neck. So you'll have noticed there, nowhere near the head or the neck. So Aidan, if I put the blanket down first and then you lie on it. 
If you lie on the blanket, roll onto it. Yeah. So I'm, that's too high, so I don't want his head and neck in. So that's it. And arms in or out. In. Okay. So then the, the benefit you get from doing it lying down is you're getting, as well as having the tight wrap, you're also getting the log roll, which is in additional sensory input. And then I'm rolling Aiden over, and then I'm giving him a tight squeeze. Okay? Okay, so that's the lycra, uh, the lycra wrap or the blanket wrap. You can consider a body sock. Um, this is one that I've got from a stitch different that Aiden loves. You're going to show people how you use a body sock. And whilst the blanket's good, a stretchy blanket, the, the lycra is just so much better. Um, yeah, so you're in the body sock. And then you can do all sorts of positions. Obviously, some ch children just don't like this at all. Um, and that's fine, that's not for them. But um, some children get a lot of benefit from that. Um, okay. So, now I need you to... To come out of that, Aiden, and we're going to do some therapy ball activities. Are you stuck? Let's have a look. Oh no! There's a hole somewhere. There is. Okay. There you go. Oh, right. Okay. Let's move all this out the way. Get the therapy ball. So. I've got a standard therapy ball. This is um, a, a peanut roll. So the thing about a peanut roll is it just offers more stability. So if your child is just going to wobble off the therapy ball, um, the peanut roll gives more stability. So Aidan, because these are calming activities, and I'm stressing the word calming, I'm going to get you. I'd have, I'd have quiet music on, some gentle music, and I'm slowly, in time for the music, rocking Aidan backwards and forwards over the therapy ball okay and then I might see if Aiden prefers to turn round or do it the other way you're gonna go on your back okay and then I've got you okay all right well done so it's slower so what you might find is that your child might do exactly what Aiden's doing now which is pushing with his feet and trying to go quicker. So I'm just hold, so I'm holding him and just encouraging him to go slow. Um, and in terms of co-regulation, I'm if I wasn't talking now, I would be deep breathing. I would be I would be taking lots of deep breaths. My my, I'm speaking, um, I'm projecting my voice so you can hear me, but if I was doing this to try and cal help Aidan calm, I would be speaking a lot more softly, a lot more slowly. I would be focusing on how I'm feeling. I would be bringing myself down. Um, and then with the music and with me bringing my level down, then hopefully Aidan would start to calm too. However, I think Aidan is just too excited about being a YouTube star, aren't you, Aiden? Okay, so um, the other things we can do um, are walking on the therapy ball. So if you, you, you put your tummy on the therapy ball and you put your hands out and you slowly walk a few steps forward and then slowly walk a few steps back and a few steps forward and a few steps back. That's it. Okay. Um, have I done them all? Okay, and then we're going to do some massage. So this, this should be good. So if you lie on your tummy, okay. So the important thing to do with a the therapy ball massage is to ask your child about what pressure is good for them. Again, we're completely avoiding the head and the neck. We're getting the therapy ball. We're starting. Um, it's a bit too hard okay so again it depends on the child some children um, you would be putting a, quite a lot of weight sorry you'd be putting quite a lot of weight through the therapy ball um, 
Aidan doesn't like that, so I'm not putting much weight through. In fact, this isn't an activity I would usually do with Aidan at all. Um, so you would be putting, you'd be putting more weight usually on, and you'd be rolling the ball down the body. When you get to the joint behind the knees, you'd be easing off, going right the way down to the feet, going slowly, really slowly, putting pressure on, right the way back to um, the top of the back and you could do that quite a few times and um, some children just absolutely love it and you could just do it um, for quite a while okay so that's the the therapy ball massage do you want to go and sit with daddy Aidan for a minute and then we'll have you back in a second um, so I've put here a re uh, retreat chime with a weighted blanket, um, but really you either need OT advice for this um, or you definitely need to go to somewhere that's going to follow the, the um, Royal College of OT guidelines on weighted therapy. Uh, I've suggested here searching for mindfulness videos on YouTube and then searching for um, child-friendly breathing techniques. At the end of this document that you've got, um, there's my favourite... Um, child-friendly breathing technique. So you have a diagram of the five th finger breathing. So the idea of the five finger breathing is that you um, teach your child to um, breathe in as they go up, up, and breathe out as they go down. Slowly breathe in as they go up and out as they go down. Um, and if they do that all the way, so it's a really quick, It's a really quick breathing activity, but it's one again, um, it's ideal if we can teach our children some self-regulation tips. So it might be that you have a child, um, probably more a child that's in mainstream school that you can say, you know, you, you, you take a few minutes and do some, do some five finger breathing. Okay. Um, vibration is what I want to talk about next. Um, Vibration is highly stimulating to the proprioceptive sense. Um, there's lots of different vibration items out there. I've got two here. Um, and these are the um, there's links again in the document. So this is a face massager um, and these have different heads. So this is a really soft kind of tickly head and then this is kind of a firmer a, a firmer head so you can find out what your child likes um, and what I suggest with vibration is that you you don't do it to the child you tend to find if you turn this on and put it in a child's hand if they like it they will put it to the area they need it most um, and often it will be around the face here um, by the, the um, but yeah if you just hand that to a child um, and see and some children really find it really beneficial you can get vibrating cushions um, so this is good because it's given the vibration but the child is also having to give themselves a really tight squeeze to activate the vibration um, so there's different cushions suggested okay. I told you about cold water play to alert um, the system and so warm water as you know a warm a warm bath is calming so warm water play it's just considering um, getting a washing up bowl putting some warm water putting a child's favorite toys in um, for a bit of a relaxing activity we talked about the movement walk where you go on a walk and you have to jump and hop so um, for a calming walk we've talked about a mindfulness walk um, and what can be good is to agree things to focus on. So you might go on a walk and you agree that you'll look out for everything that's green. Or you might go on a walk and listen for sounds. And then you have to report back to each other what sounds you heard on the walk. So that's quite a nice thing to do. Um, foods um, that are calming are sweet foods, smooth foods, creamy foods and warming foods. And that's what the research shows us. So the last activity we're going to do um, is, hello, 
is story massage. Okay, let me get my book. So, thank you, Aidan. So I've put a link to this book, which I think is around £10 um, on Amazon. And this is called Once Upon a Touch, Story Massage for Children. Um, I'm not going to read the whole back, don't worry, but I'll just read the, the top bit. A fun and creative way to increase general well-being, improve concentration and self-awareness, and encourage relaxation in children aged 3 to 11. Um, so this book teaches you 10 very simple massage techniques. Um, one of the things, schools tend to like this because um, a lot of schools are reluctant to massage the children. Well, obviously at the moment with COVID, but I mean in normal times, um, you know, if they feel that if they've not been trained in massage, they shouldn't be touching the children. But if you're following this book, if you're following the precautions and, and doing the 10 recommended techniques and you're staying just to this, this area of the back, then you're okay. So um, this book has lots of stories in it, some really lovely um, stories about the fairground and springtime and pancakes. It's also got all your little Red Riding Hood Humpty Dumpty type things in. Um, but the one Aidan chose um, is a factual one. It's called Walking on the Moon. Um, so I think what's nice about the book is you've You've, you've got the nursery rhymes, but then you've also got um, your learning stories as well. And it teaches you how you can make up um, how you can make up your own massage stories. So if your child's favorite book is The Gruffalo, for example, you could sit down and work out how to use these 10 massage techniques to The Gruffalo. So I'm just going to show you an example. So this story is called Walking on the Moon. And we always start by checking with the child that I'm okay to massage you. So am I okay to massage you, Aidan? Okay. So the moon rotates around the earth in a circle called an orbit. People have looked up to the sky and wondered about the moon for thousands of years. Then in 1969, two astronauts walked on the moon for the first time. The moon has no atmosphere, so people could jump very high in the air. The moon has no weather, so there is no wind and there is no rain. This means the footprints of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin will remain for many years to come. Okay, so that's just an example for you and it's my new favorite book. Um, so the rest of the document that you have um, has links to a few suggested websites. Um, you've got your five finger breathing diagram and your pyramid of learning. So um, I'm not sure what you were all expecting. I hope um, this has been helpful, um, at least to some of you. Um, I've really enjoyed doing it. I've never done it before. Um, please give me some feedback because it's something I could do more of, um, you know, if, if that's what people want. Um, I'm really honoured that you've all, you know, given up your time to spend it with me um, and Aidan and thank you very much. Okay, goodbye.